Excuse me, we're all set to go? We're all set? Welcome. How are you all? Happy New Year. Uh, I'm John Martin, Francine Tishman, Jim Labrie, Matt Rowland, and Maureen Groton. Welcome. Uh, we're going to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, you are being streamed live, uh, and you're also being recorded for future viewing. So uh, when you come up to the podium, if you have a good side, just lean towards the camera and they'll get that for you. So I know we have a lot of folks here from Hampshire Regional and Norris. We just wanted to have a meeting together so that we can talk about questions and issues that have come up over the, the past, so we figured this would be the right group to, to bring up. And I know we have... Uh, you can introduce yourselves when you come up, but we have Aaron Kucher, from, chair of the Norris School Committee, uh, Krista, is it Schmitty? Schmitty, yeah. Schmitty. hi. Uh, principal at Hampshire Regional, Elisa Puda, principal at Norris, there you go. Uh, Carl Sherlyman, Sherlyman, you're the chair of the Hampshire Regional School Committee, correct? Yes. And we have Aaron Osborne, superintendent. Welcome all. So this is going to be, uh, we've got a Probably a couple of small things we want to get off the agenda before we start, if you don't mind. If I can find it in all this paper. Uh, this, on the reports, does anybody from the select board have anything they need to report at this meeting before next Tuesday? No. Uh, Ed, do you have anything? No, everything I've got can wait till Tuesday night. Okay. Just a reminder that I'm not here next Tuesday. I'm out of the. Yeah, I just want to bring two things up because. Go ahead. You'll be here. No, yeah, I'll be here. Okay, uh, the we had a lot of concerns on the uh, Zepka barn roof, and Ed has secured somebody to secure the uh, the metal roofing down. So I know that was a project of interest to a lot of people. So Ed's taking care of that, and also we got a. Letter offering the right of first refusal for the property on Pomeroy Meadows. So we'll be talking about that more at a future meeting. But those are two good bits of news I wanted to go over. Okay, uh, go ahead. Our next meeting is when? And next Tuesday, the 8th. January 8th. 8th. And then, so my, I guess my question is with regard to the, the, um, the meeting um, on February, what is it? What did we decide? The town town meeting? meeting? Yeah. Do we need to do we need to have with regard to certifying the articles and and looking at them in advance? I'm not sure what the time frame is. Is it 12 days? Uh, do we need to have a meeting? I guess where I'm going with this is do we need to have a meeting between the 8th and our next meeting, the 22nd, in order to comply with the laws and procedures with regard to the posting of that and that we've seen the articles? I'd, I'd recommend it. Just it gives us a would give us a, we'll few, a few more days to sign it and get. Well, I think if we have the meeting on the twenty second, we'd be late. Wait, right, a day. Right, day. I, I would twelve days, right? Fourteen. Okay. Fourteen days, two weeks. So, so we'd be late. Yeah. So, so, I, so I, I, I would suggest that maybe so a the special meeting the week before. Wouldn't be ready for next Tuesday then, right? No, they will not. No. So we got to. They'll, yep. they'll be ready in rough draft. But so how about this? But not to be I mean, we got to we got to look at the official articles and and. Right. 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 So should we just move the 22nd meeting to somewhere else, or should we still have two? Why don't we do the 15th? Yeah. That's a Tuesday, which is our normal day, and then we can decide on the 15th whether we need the 22nd or not. Keep it on the calendar just in case. Will everything be ready yet on the 15th? Or are you worried about that? Uh, that's, two, that's two weeks away. I mean, at the worst, I would say, go to the 17th, but let's go for the 15th. Okay. Would uh, we have another? Me I have another meeting that night on the 17th, um, and John, you do too, because you're on the same committee. Right, but we're going to do the 15th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All set. Okay. okay. Thanks, Matt. Yep. No problem. Okay. Oh, not on the 22nd. So it's now. the 15th. Is the no, no, no. We we're keeping the 22nd. Um, we're doing the 15th. Keep and we're going to discuss on the 15th whether we need the 22nd. Just, the eight, just eight, put down every week on your calendar. Eight, Tuesday, the 15th <laughs> and possibly the 22nd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we might not need the 22nd, but 6 p.m. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> one one thing is it's for the people up here. I've gotten a lot of concerns about people at home not being able to hear us. Yeah. So we need too. to be close to the mic. And I reviewed uh, some of the select board meetings today, and it is tough to to hear. So if we can stay close to the mic. Do you think it's a speaking to the mic issue, or are we just having a connection issue? I think the mics aren't great like we, we talked about, but when we talk to the new ECAT director, we're going to talk about getting this all upgraded. Okay. And the mics are really just for recording. They're not for amplification in the room. Right. So we also have to speak up on top of that. Yes. Thank you. Okay, now Bobby Jones. She's here, too. I forgot to mention business manager of Hampshire Regional, so sorry I missed you. Yeah. Okay, so I, I think we'd just like to start off by just, and I don't know if it's you, Aaron, or you, Bobby, coming up and just explaining how the Hampshire Regional Budget is done during the, the budget period, just so we'll, we can back into that, because I think we'll have a bunch of questions as we go forward. How is it prepared, and how is the input given by all the towns, and what happens to it going through the school committee? So um, basically, you we got to will introduce yourself for the oh, record. Sorry. That's okay. Um, Bobby Jones, business administrator, Hampshire Regional School District. Um, basically, we just meet together. Um, we've met with department heads and the principal for preliminary work, and then on the January meeting, which is on the seventh for Hampshire Regional, we'll discuss preliminary um, budget with some numbers, probably not complete numbers, but some numbers. February, we'll have the um, public preliminary budget hearing, and the school committee will vote on that budget. And then March, we'll have the final um, budget meeting. Mm -hmm. And then they will vote, vote on the final budget at that meeting. Okay. So any input you want, if you can come to any of the meetings between now, January, February, would be great. Okay, and I know a question has come up in the past, the voting, how it's balanced between the towns and how it's average out because it's kind of a quirky formula, at least in my mind. So can you explain that? So the um, the way that it's assessed out to the towns is it's a five-year rolling average. Okay. It's actually a combination of the state minimum contribution and the five-year rolling average, okay. which is based on the October 1 counts of each year. And then that's averaged out, and that's how the assessment gets broken out. Well, that's how the funds are allocated, correct? Right. That's correct. what you're talking about? Yep. Yeah, how's the voting? Right, backing up until at the Hampshire oh, the Regional School Committee, how is the vote taken and what town has what percentages and how is that formulated? I just want to get this so everybody out there understands Okay, it. for the vote of the, okay, it's taken by weighted vote and yeah. I know Aaron actually right. does that with his sheet. He has all the little numbers that he has to do. So did he calculate. bring those little numbers with him? <laughs> I have those numbers, I believe, in aggregate Southampton You're, numbers. Can you, do, would you mind coming up, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's tough to hear on a... I think it's a... So, <laughs> Aaron Osborne, Hampton so Superintendent. I uh, sorry, I didn't uh, know that was going to be asked for. Um, uh, Southampton members, uh, I believe there are five members, uh, they hold five, six. 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 six, sorry, uh, they hold a combined 47 point some odd percent of the Hampshire regional vote. 47 point something? 47 point something, I can't tell you. It's based on, uh, oh. Well, it's six votes out of how many? Yep. I think. Yep. Out of 14. 47.28% right? percent. Of the, of the overall vote, so close to half. Now that's half. when the committee votes on the that's budget. That's where the committee votes, yes. But when it rolls out to the town, Southampton is one of five voting towns. One of towns. five member towns. So we towns. have one vote at that point in time. Uh, you have whatever the, the regional agreement says. I believe the so, regional agreement says that each town then votes on it. Right. And I think it takes two towns to uh, overrule it. So right. can we, uh, before you go, I'm sorry, right. can we back up? How many are on, because the question was asked, how many are on the Hampshire Regional School Committee? I'm sorry, there are six. I apologize. Oh, no, total. How many, oh, how many? Uh, 18. 18. 18. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay, so that gets a, one third. Yeah. Right, that gets approved, but 47.28%. So that's, that's how it's weighed, yeah. yeah. Um, um, each one is, sorry, the numbers are small. Each member has seven point oh some odd percent okay and that's per the agreement we did back yeah yep. okay so there we go so each town 
once that budget is passed by just a simple majority uh, of the Hampshire Regional yeah, School Committee? Yeah, simple majority. Okay, it goes to each town, they put it on a town meeting, mm -hmm. and four out of five towns have to pass it in order for it to pass total. Yes. And okay. Like you were saying, if two don't, then it goes back to the Hampshire Regional School Committee right. to relook at it. Right. And they don't necessarily have to do anything, they just have to relook at it and it comes up at the town meetings right. again. Is that right. accurate? Okay. Could I clarify, clarify something about the voting? When I was in the Hampshire Regional School Committee, there was a member from another town who basically never came to meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, and there were times when there were vacancies. Mm -hmm. How does that uh, get translated? Do the uh, additional members pick up the vote, or is that uh, seven um, point something canceled out? That vote's canceled out. Okay. Okay. So uh, I guess one of the questions going forward is we had an override last year, and Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it only passed by about 100 votes, if I remember correctly, right? right. And we were very adamant about this is going to be a year that we're going to restart the whole right. process. So as Hampshire Regional goes through their budget process, knowing that we're, we're not going to be recommending that we have any large extra amounts of money that we mm -hmm. can fund, how do you anticipate working with us on that? Um, we are at the moment trying to maintain a level service budget. Okay. Um, Kristen is working very diligently with Bobby and her staff, and, and, and I'm involved in it, um, to try to make sure that we keep our service level as, as close or, or to exactly what we've had um, this year. So level of service, not level of funding, which obviously is a... Right. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's, it's hard to tell anyone this day and age with health, health insurance increases um, right now that you're going to be a level funding. Okay, no, I, I don't disagree. I can, I'd love to try to promise that, but. Yeah, some people, when they hear a level of service, they figure the dollar's not right. gonna go up, but there's contractual uh, Obligation. right. obligations in there. Okay. Yep. And can I just ask about enrollment? It seems to be a, a changing number. The number mm -hmm. I had was 324 in October. Ed had something like 345. Five. Mm -hmm. And then I look at what we got on this impact sheet, and it shows we're at 366. Now, I know Which, the, what sheet is that? This Worthington. Impact. Oh, did okay. Did you copy that and share it with them? That is 2017 numbers. Um, but our budget is we're we're assessed based on the right. You're based on the October first numbers. Um, so for so for this for this year um, for 2017-18, you have 337. For 2018-19, you have 322. I believe is what Kristen just handed me. Two new numbers for you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, we got five. It, it's it's a moving target, but you know, year to year, based on graduation rates, how many students come up. We have bigger classes. We have smaller classes that come up to the the middle high school. Oh, Bobby, you want to add to that? Yeah, I just want to clarify that the numbers used to. Um, do the assessment are actually based on students that reside in your town that you are fiscally responsible for. Right. So um, it's, it's students that are in the town yeah. that may choice out, they may charter out, yeah. but they're included in the count towards the assessment. Right. It does not include school choice in. So what numbers you may see, you know, provided by Kristen or Eliza, right may differ from the numbers that you're going to see on the assessments. So if somebody from Southampton <laughs> school choice is out to East Hampton, is still counting in the Hampshire regional numbers? Right, right. So for instance, um, for Southampton for 20, mm -hmm. you have 25 choice out and eight charter out that will be included in your assessment numbers along with your resident kids that mm -hmm. attend the regional. And so it's just a little different than saying who's actually attending the school. Yeah. So I just wanted to make that. So there's we as the region fund that those costs. So 10% of the students aren't even there from Southampton. Right. Right. Okay. So the choice out, we're paying for that obviously. Does that come out of the Hampshire regional budget? That's right. Choice and charter out come out of the regional okay. budget. budget. How does the choice in revenue get billed on the on the budget? Where does that show up? That's used on the revenue side so that we use it for the revenue to offset the assessment. Is that before you that's, do the assessment? Yep, that's okay. before the assessment. So we're getting charged out, but we're also getting credit in. Yep, okay. and you see that when you get sent the information, there's two different sheets. One is the assessment sheet, yep. which shows all the revenues, and then it breaks down so you have your total mm -hmm. budget less the revenues, and then what's going to be assessed out. 
So on the ones that choice in, they're obviously coming from non-Hampshire regional towns. Uh, is the assessment of um, that income shared among equally among the current regional towns? Choice, <coughs> excuse me, choice in does not count towards the assessment. Choice in students. It do offsets not. the assessment, right? It right. offsets the assessment, right? Right. But, through the revenue. but, but the at the high level, before you divide it up amongst the towns, so it just goes exactly. on the top level. It goes at the yeah. top right. Level. The full okay, amount goes yeah. before, right. and then yeah. so it doesn't depend on any town's assessment. It's it's taken no. off the top of the exactly. Town. Right. Yep. Right. So it's proportional mm -hmm. to the town. Right. Right. Yeah, they, yeah, okay. yeah, because it comes off the top. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's fair. Uh, the other thing, we we're talking about budgets, and we may jump over here, but mm -hmm. since we're on the budgets, we had, Bobby, you guys may, you, you <laughs> folks, you folks may want to sit up front here. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Just relax. Uh, on the budget now, we see the, uh, the total uh, line by line item, and we see what Southampton's part of it is. We were requesting if we could have another column added that said percentage, which from our point of view, it looks like just an additional column in a, say, an Excel spreadsheet. Now, is, that, is this, oh, sorry. That's okay. Me. On the monthly reports, are you talking, or the quarterly yeah. reports yeah. on the monthly reports? Yeah. yeah, no, I had told Ed we'd work <laughs> together to um, get that done, but I, it was impossible to do it for right. this meeting. Okay, so. so there's no issue with that? No, not okay. for those reports. Itself. Was there anything else on the yeah, reports? Yeah, we'd asked uh, for a, I thought there was, the recent thing that I looked at actually had the percent of where the spending was relative to this part of the year, the one I just looked at for this meeting. But it's hard to look at the numbers without actually seeing the whole. We're only, oh, yeah. we're only shown a percentage of technology director's position, and it's just mm -hmm. really hard to actually really evaluate the budget without having the whole. So that's the col column that would be helpful for me to see. Yeah, we only see the portion that we're responsible for, and we want to see the whole portion. So of just the central office? I think of everything. Of, of everything. Well, it would just be the central divide, office. Divide it up in order to say which piece is Southampton anyway, so it just would be helpful to just see um, yeah. like the whole picture as opposed to just the, our assessment of it. Right. The entire Hampshire Regional School budget. Right. 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 Yeah. Cause everything, yeah. Right, because otherwise, I mean, we could do the math, but that takes a lot of time for us to figure out, you know, what our percentage is and then extrapolate then what mm -hmm. the balance would be. Yeah, I don't think I'm, I'm actually, I don't think I'm clear on what you're requesting. Uh, so, for so, example, the technology director's <laughs> salary and all the, uh, you know, the basically the full budget for Hampshire Regional. When we see the copy of the budget, we see a Southampton's percentage of every single portion. line item. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so we're just looking to have item. the whole uh, the whole wrong. budget because I've never seen, you know. Right. So the only part that's not that you're only seeing is the central office. That's the only one that's apportioned out. The rest of you see the rest of Hampshire Regional budget. You see the rest of Southampton budget. The only part is the central office salaries hmm. that are individual to the individual elementary schools. Yeah. Well, we're, we're just looking at these, Bobby. Yeah. For instance, uh, the SPED pupil service director. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is that a central office yeah. position? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it looks like it goes all the way down to. Yeah, that first section is all central office. Yeah. Okay. All so central that's just the central office. office. Right. Pick up where we're seeing the whole, the whole budget. Whole looks portion of each line be at the principal. To me, it looks like line 84. Should pick up around the principal. Um, line 84. You have it by Desi Chart of Accounts, right? Office. Yeah. It line be a 2200 line item. Line 20, 60. 112 is the So then the rest of the budget shows basically the full budget, and we have to derive our portion of it. We have to like. Exactly. Do that yes. Okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. So if exactly. she puts the percentage on there. Maybe it just would be helpful to have a column that has the full budget yep. throughout, and then a column that has Southampton's assessment. Right. Just you know, for us to be able to evaluate it, just for me, well, I feel like I'm. In the I, dark. I see what you're saying now, but part of part of that to me is if you take again, go back to where we're talking about the assessments, mm -hmm. and you're assessed after the revenues. Mm -hmm. So you, it would be kind of hard to relate that and. Maybe Aaron can help me figure that one out. But relate yeah, it to the whole budget um, because you're not assessed on the entire budget. Right. I, you know, I, I guess. I mean, I guess it's also hard to come to this and, and, and be standing up here and have to answer what we can do. Is it something you could put into an email and send to I'm us, sure. yeah. and we can Absolutely. play with it and, and, and look at what our options are? Yeah. And it's more than just a 12-second, hey, here's an answer kind of response. Yeah, yeah. No problem at all. I, I think what they're saying, and I'm going to 
because you're there, Aaron. It says superintendent salary forty nine oh twenty seven. If we had a column which we're talking about a percentage of oh, Southampton, we can just central. extrapolate that back into it. If somebody really oh, wanted okay. to know, okay. we could yep. just extrapolate. Because that's also okay. done on a different yeah. assessment. Okay. The it's easier. We don't, I don't need right. to know right, right. here. The only caution I'd give is how wide you know a reporter. If we keep adding things, eventually, you know. So I just want to caution you on that. I've, no. I've seen uh, some reports I, get crazy. I so, think the easiest way, I'm sorry, okay. is if you just add that percentage, that and section. the central office stays at what you have now. Yep. And again, if we want to know, we can extrapolate backwards sure. into that. That's yeah. not a big deal. Yep, I got that. Yeah. Um, okay. But the thing is, on that too, just to explain, that's also a little bit different of an assessment. It's based on the same um, premise of the five-year rolling average, okay. but instead of being by town, it's actually by school. That's how it has to be done. So, so maybe, Hampshire Regional pays a portion of Central, but I can help yeah, you. Know, we can email, email you that information and you can give us those caveats yeah. and just say this is how Perfect. it's done. Okay. I yep. guess it's more explanatory. Yeah. Sure. I think we're used to looking at revenue and expense reports. So, I mean, we understand that mm -hmm. uh, it's helpful mm -hmm. just to see the whole picture of expenses, mm -hmm. revenue, yeah. we know will be offsetting some of it anyway. So, it's just helpful. I feel like we're always looking at not the full picture. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're, we're just trying to get a clearer picture as we go into this budget year because it's going to be a tough year that we're going to have to uh, say no to a lot of people, I think. So if you shoot okay. off an email with all your requests, yeah. mm -hmm. um, including the monthly report one, that'd be, sure. that'd be yeah. helpful. Yeah. And have you have to get up to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> This is what keeps people from asking questions. <laughs> I'm just trying. Hi, my name is Kristen Smitty. I'm the principal at Hampshire Regional. I'm also trying to take notes as to what you're looking for. So I think on your budget page there is a percentage column of how much the budget has been spent out of right. the total line. Right. But you're looking for the Southampton's percentage of what that total line is. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So if you have a budget line for I don't know. Principal professional, that's the first one that has the full amount on there. Yep. What percentage are we paying in Southampton of that? And you know, it's averaging around 55, I guess, depending on the numbers we use, but it, it's just in what percentage of the budget, which is at the last column, it's just easier for us to look at it. Yeah, yeah I think um, what Bobby was trying to say is that the assessments total out to be about 9 million, but the Hampshire budget is about 14 million. So Southampton wouldn't be paying 55% total, it would be 55% of the nine million. So yeah. I can understand how that would be yeah. confusing. So I'm just trying to clarify. Yeah. It's just from our point of view, for. we don't do this full time, so we don't have the time. So we're trying to make it easy for us to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. You two aren't gonna go away, are you? Come on back. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> okay, so the, the capital and operating costs are shared by that percentage. Right. Say if I use 55% for Southampton, okay. And some folks sent me some questions, so I'm going to, can you tell us how Worthington is intertwined to Hampshire Regional? They have a three-year contract. I don't think people yeah. understand how that works and how it got approved. <coughs> I know it didn't come before the select boards, and I don't know that it has to, but can you just go over that and how that's working? And if, Can you say why it wasn't, uh, or was it considered that they joined the regional agreement? Right. That's all part of the question, I guess. Um, that was never brought up that they um, requested to join the regional agreement, so they're not part of it. What they pay for is they tuition in their students, um, any seven to 12 students at a higher cost than the regular school choice. Regular school choice is 5,000. They tuition in at 7,500 per student. Okay. Plus any sped, sped um, costs that are yeah. included there. So let me ask you a question. Uh, First of all, do you know why they, they uh, left Gateway? Why, why? Do you know why they, they wanted their own elementary school, and okay. Gateway had closed that school. Okay. Yeah. So we're paying on average, uh, depending on what numbers we use, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 per student, mm -hmm. sending them to Hampshire Regional. Yep. School choice coming in is 5000 and Worthington is paying 7500 7500 plus they pay for their own transportation. Yeah. They pay for any out-of-district costs yeah. that they right. have for their own students. <coughs> And, They're um, close to half, okay. or a little more than half. So, so. Um, so what I've given you and, and what Ed has handed out um, is a bit of an assessment of, of Worthington's real, real true impact. Um, the 7,500 isn't really the true picture. Um, they actually, based on their incremental special education costs, they actually end up paying about $8,164.89. 
Um, now, they also don't pay, um, they don't um, have a seat on the school committee. They don't have any, we, we don't have any legal obligations to them. So, um, you know, that would be something that would, would come off the top. They pay, you know, all of their own sort of special education legal. That's where most of our legal costs, um, we have some costs associated with the school committee. Um, we have no obligation to them for that. So that would kind of come off the top. Um, they pay their own transportation. So we're not obligated to right. pay any transportation for them. Um, uh, and so if you look at the middle section of the Worthington tuition uh, handout I gave you, um, they also pay all of their own out of district tuition. So, you know, we pay about $286,000 um, that if you were in a similar agreement to Worthington, you would be obligated to pay your share of that. Um, uh, they also pay for all of their own choice and charter out, which Hampshire Regional pays on your behalf. Um, so depending on all of those choice kids we talked about that you are assessed for. Um, so when we look at that, truly the comparable cost per student um, across Hampshire Regional really is about $9,627.14. Nine thousand six hundred twenty seven million. Nine thousand. Nine thousand six hundred. Sorry. We we would like um, that agreement. So yeah. <laughs> backing all of those costs out of say what you're assessed. So when you look at it, you know, yes, they do they do still pay a little bit less on average when you figure it out. Um, they also don't have a seat at the table um, for anything. Um, uh, the numbers we receive. So we have nineteen kids. At six grade levels, that's about three students per grade level. Doesn't change our number of teachers, doesn't change anything for us. Uh, it represents $155,000 of offsets to you. Um, you know, I can think of two school districts off the top of my head that would pick up this agreement in a heartbeat, probably Mohawk or Central Berkshire. Um, you know, there are, no, there are other school districts that are absolutely um, suffering for numbers. Um, I, I, you know, it's feel, I feel like uh, when it comes to choice, charter, even mm -hmm. vocational for that matter, it's, it's actually a positive thing to me that there's school committee representation mm -hmm. in town. Like people have a say in where their money goes. So I don't necessarily see that as an advantage. Like I'm bothered, you know, like I support people being whatever school environment that they're going to succeed in. Right. Um, but I also think that I wish the structure was, was different so that mm -hmm. choice, charter, and vocational would actually have school committee representation. So I guess I just don't see that as so, uh, our advantage. Right. And I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, it's to our advantage in the sense that, that we call the shots. Worthington has no say in the shots. Mm -hmm. Worthington loses in that one, quite honestly, I think. Mm -hmm. um, we make all curriculum decisions. Um, uh, on things like that. And they also do pay a little bit into the central office, which is helpful. Uh, it's not a huge amount. They pay about $21,000. Can I ask about that? Because they costs. didn't have an administrator, I think, in the beginning, mm -hmm. right? So they were being mentored uh, yep. by an administrator. So was there a vice principal hired because of the Worthington students coming in? Is that person still vice in principal? Was hired. there a, um, any administrative staff hired specifically to cover the Worthington additional kids? No. no? So they were just uh, paying an administrative fee because they didn't have an administrator for their own elementary right. school. So they right. were in some ways you, you have to have a superintendent of record. So uh, yeah. So for the past couple of years, um, the former superintendent for Hampshire Regional served as their superintendent of record. Okay. Um, also served as their special education director. Mm -hmm. um, that was charged an additional amount in the past. Um, they have they have decided to have a principal slash superintendent right. at least for the time being right now. Um, you know, I, I, this has happened occasionally in other districts around the state, um, and frequently what happens initially is you do do a tuitioning and agreement. Um, reopening and rebuilding a regional agreement is a long process. It's sort of like, a, you know, for lack of a better word, a dating period sometimes. Um, and then at some point a decision might be made as to what to do. I think this was seen as let's get them over this hump, let's get them through what they're committed to doing in terms of the, the getting out of gateway, which is what they, what their goal was, and see where things go from there. So I they're still paying an administrative fee, even though they have their own superintendent? Yes, there are other fees they pay. We give, 
<coughs> they're paying a fee for services. Right. So right. in other words, they okay. we right. do some of their business services like end of year report, yeah. um, some of their grant services, right. um, that sort of thing. Right. So they pay a fee for yeah. service. And what happens with that fee for service of 21,000 mm -hmm. is that first portion of the budget that you see, which is the central office, when we break out those salaries, we take that 21,000 off mm -hmm. and then assess the rest of it to the towns. Right. So. so it's yeah. just like school choice. It, it offsets the top number so the amount you're assessed is reduced. Yeah, I totally get the uh, importance of school choice in and this particular agreement. So I can appreciate that there are a lot of other towns that would actually want to have this uh, agreement. Mm -hmm. When I was in the school committee, we had over 100 East Hampton kids that school choiced in, and then East Hampton built their own school, and I think it's probably much, much less. But at no point did we like change our letterhead stationery to say six towns, mm -hmm. one school. Yeah. Like, so at what point is this a regional agreement? Mm -hmm. Somewhat, you know, like at what point is uh, do we? Where do we? Where's the line? I guess. So if you look at our letterhead now, it says five towns, one. Uh, district and, and Worthington's kind of been removed for the time being. I think we're, you know Worthington's figuring out what they want to be okay. and, and what they want to do. Um, and the intent was to let them do that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know in a year, two years, they may come back to us and change their minds and mm -hmm. you know it's uh, a three year contract, right? Right now it's a three year so they're contract. They're in their first year. We're in uh, we're, yeah, we're going through the first year, so we've got two Ben's more. in 21. 21. So uh, are they sending all of their high school students to Hampshire or are they placing them elsewhere? Because you said they have 19 students. Their, their standard is for them to come here. So the bus that picks them up takes them to Hampshire Regional. Now just like any student at East Hampton, at Hampshire Regional, at Southampton, they can school choice elsewhere. Um, some students when they made the move, if they were already at Gateway, they may have chosen to stay at Gateway, stay with their friends, um, things like that. Um, I believe our numbers are higher now. We have, we have 27 this year, so this is this is prior year. Um, so this year we have 27, so that revenue is, is higher. That's seven through 12, right? Uh, seven to 12, yes. Yep. Um, they also contribute, another way to contribute um, is they contribute, they buy school lunches. They contribute to our school lunch program. Um, school lunch programs are notoriously struggling in this day and age. Um, they contribute athletic fees, um, you know, as part of uh, as part of being part of the, the district. So, you know, there are other maybe smaller, subtler ways that I think they help us out. Um, it doesn't hurt to have their numbers on sports teams either. I mean, I think, you know, having a few more members of the various teams is helpful to our, our competitiveness. So hopefully down the road it, it, it'll be a good thing for them to come into our system for both sides of it but uh, is that something you folks are looking at obtaining if it works for us um you know when this when this agreement comes to an end in 2021 i think we we sit down and we ask them what's their intention what do they want to do and um you know i think we need to figure it out from there um i, so I don't want to predict what's going to happen so we will have to plan well ahead of that Yes. Especially if we're going to yes. do a contract or an SLA or something. Yeah, it's just, not, it's just not been my priority in the first six months. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. This so. is our second agreement with them. They, how many years yeah. prior did we have this relationship? One, two? It began in 20... Seven, I think. This, the end of this contract, I think, will be seven years. Seven years, yeah. At the end in 2021, will be seven. Yeah, so they've so been they, they, four years they, prior to this contract. So four years, so a total of seven. And they in, contribute no capital, obviously, to the, to the capital no, they have fund. No They're not assessed the building, anything no for that. No ownership in anything. Yep. So yeah. you said 27 students? Now, yep. so that's about eighty thousand dollars at three thousand dollars difference if Probably. they were full members. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think it would be a good idea for an assessment to be done. I mean, seven years is a fairly good amount of time. I think. Mm -hmm. I, think so. I think an assessment of the comparisons mm -hmm. would be a good thing. Not just you know what do you want to do, Worthington, mm -hmm. but what's the what's in the best interest of the school. Okay. 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 I think it's <laughs> That's why I say you might want to sit in the front row. <laughs> right. you keep making me have to I'm sorry. Here. I think if there were to be a change, towns should weigh in about what they would prefer, too. So if 
the regional agreement were to change or if the tuition amount were to change, we would need input from towns to make that final decision. So it's not just based on what Worthington wants. It should be what is best for our district. Well, the so. agreement well, can't the change unless all five towns agree to it Correct. and get passed right. at a Correct. town meeting. So. Right. 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 Yeah, the could be four. No, it's got to be I guess I'm going to remind you that um, you know, no matter what happens at, at that point, you have six members on uh, the Hampshire Regional School Committee who are elected officials for your town um, who carry 47% of the vote. Yeah. And, I, and I guess that's that's one of the things that's going to come up sooner or later, but we have 55% of the students, we have 47% of the vote, and we mm -hmm. never have the majority of votes, but yet mm -hmm. we pay 55% of all the costs. And that's been a kind of a sticking point with people in Southampton for a lot of, yeah. a lot of years. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump yeah. into that. Sure. So, um, so basically what he's saying, but then also with regard, so that's, that's, that's just school committee vote, but then with regard to the authorization and approval of the budget, it requires two towns mm -hmm. as opposed, I think that the bar should be much higher on this in that okay. if one town right. doesn't, doesn't approve of the budget, yeah. then I think it should go back to being looked at. And wh where I'm coming from on this, just I just want to make sure that I'm being clear, mm -hmm. is that, and, and I realize that this is this would require a rewrite of this, which I yeah, which I, I think mean, that, that would be a five town meeting. Of course, right. okay. but but you know it's been a long time since this has been looked sure. at. This is an extremely dated contract, mm -hmm. which by all contract standards is. Mm -hmm. I mean, this really needs to be this needs to be a priority of being looked at. And where I'm coming from on this is that I, I'm I think that the lifeblood of a town is its public education system. That's my my personal opinion. Um, but from the sake of fairness, you know. Uh, this select board and the townspeople in this town, um, you know, have ha have authorization and control over the Norris School. But to a certain degree, given the voting rights and the fact that it mm -hmm. requires two towns to vote down a Hampshire regional budget, not saying that we want to vote it down every time, but I think that it really should, like, given that we have one town that is capable of voting down, say, a Norris School budget, I think that one town should be able to vote down a Hampshire regional budget. It's just a fairness thing. And so I feel like what's going on, what can happen in this is that you know the individual town schools can suffer um, because they're not. It's it's you're hol you're holding holding yeah. it to a different bar. And, and I think and I'm concerned about that. Sorry, uh, were you going to say something? Um, I, I mean, I guess I, I'm I'm. Go ahead. I'm yeah. Go ahead. That's kind of that's. I mean that that's it in a nutshell. I just I, I think that this agreement is is dated. I'd like to see it be held to a higher bar. Um, and I just wondered what you what you kind of thought about that. And a lot of that is, is going right. along with what John says with regard to, you know, Southampton's portion of the payment for, for the budget. I think that that falls in line with, again, another relook of this. And I just think that we owe it to our citizens to to um, be more accountable because we, we hold our local school to be right. to be as accountable as well. And historically, we've been like the fifth town to vote at town meeting. And we get to the town meeting, and at that point, we really it's have... It's a done deal. Yeah, it's a right. done deal because the other four towns. Yeah. And the other four right. towns are oh. small, and their percentages can go up or down a little bit, where ours could go up, you know, six figures that we have no control over. So it's that. it's something we want to look at. It's in their best at. interest to approve it because they don't, they don't, they get all of the benefit with very low of the yeah. cost, whereas we get a ton of benefit as well, but we're shouldering the entire burden. Do you, do you see where I'm going with this? Like, oh, absolutely. Okay. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't at all disagree. I, there are many. There are regional agreements where one town can hold it up. Um, it becomes it becomes challenging in a different direction because you have um, towns that will hold ransom. Um, you know, in situations. The David and Goliath situation. You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, Amherst is struggling <laughs> with that at the moment. I mean, Amherst Regional is struggling with that at the moment, where one very small district holds them hostage on things back and forth. And it's been different districts over the years. Right. Um, so that becomes challenging. Um, you know, I, I guess I'm, you know, to some degree, I'm, I, I'm not sure, you know, uh, you know, funding wise and things like that. Um, you know, I guess that's a separate conversation, you know, funding the elementary versus funding the middle high school. I'm not, you know, the goal is not for that to be mutually exclusive and for it to be a uh, competition between the two. Um, sure, but you don't have you don't have budget transfer between the two of them, so it's kind yeah. of like it's it's inevitable, right? Like that, you mm -hmm. know. It, right, th there's there's a lot of people in right. town that just think that Hampshire Regional is fully resourced and fully funded, and and the Norris School in our right. town is is uh, yeah. is underfunded and under resourced. So, um, and so, and given that you can't move money between the um, two of them, I'm, that's right. what I'm kind of talking about. And I don't I don't think I want to speak for myself. I guess I don't 
feel that we need to change the agreement where all of a sudden we're the you know a thousand pound gorilla. Yeah, mo- there's got to be course. a there's got to be some checks and balance checks and balances in there because we don't want one town even if it's us just saying what what goes and what doesn't okay. go. That's not fair. Yes. But I think it's our intention to to look at working with the other towns and trying to open this up and come to something that's more updated. Uh, I think proportionally they're all affected. We're all affected. We're all I affected. mean, it's just we're on a larger scale, therefore our numbers look higher. But um, maybe after we have this conversation, maybe we could look at and maybe perhaps discuss some ways in which we could achieve some kind of savings or some collaboration among even the elementary schools to see how we might share resources, perhaps in a different way that would save everybody money. Right. And that's the attention attention of this meeting to get that going. Yeah. Carl, did you want to say something? Yeah, uh, Carl Schlerman, Hampshire Regional School Committee. I just wanted to comment on the school committee representation of what it was 46% from Southampton. Right. I've been on the school committee for nine years and the votes have been unanimous, I think, in every nine years. Maybe you voted against it last year. He okay. abstained, I remember, I was at that meeting. Yeah. <laughs> One vote. Yeah. You guys have an opportunity to strongly affect mm-hmm. with your elected officials and they're not doing it. Agreed. So. Yeah. I don't think it's entirely fair to say that you're not being represented or you're being unfairly represented because you have the opportunity with elected officials to yeah, yeah, have yeah. a very strong. I, g- I agree. I don't think we're saying we're unfairly represented. We just think mm-hmm. that it's an old agreement and the way it was formed is not, you know, but yeah. So different words maybe that are right. softer, um, but yeah. So, you know, the, the best vehicle for that is, is reaching out. I, th- I think, you know, I think comparing regional agreements across the state, you might find that, that many are, are even more dated. Um, it's a lot of work to, to update and change the regional agreements. You have to get five towns together, and five often disparate towns that you know can't agree on the color agree on the color of the sky on any given day, to agree on amending a regional agreement. So, it's challenging, but I I I, I think it's a worthwhile cause. I, I think it probably could be updated. Yeah, I mean the people who put this together had great intentions right. back then. Now I think we need to be more. Uh, Times are different. Realistic. Right. And I was looking at a May of last year town meeting. I was looking for something. And one of the uh, speakers in there was a woman was talking about Norris School, mm-hmm. saying we've been doing things the same way for years and years. We need to stop and take a look and do something new and better for our kids. And I don't know what she had yeah. in mind. It's just the thought of we do need to look at what's going <laughs> on. Are there better ways right. to do what we're doing? Right. Do it more economically. Do it. Uh, you know, however, so I think this is opening up that, that conversation, I which did bring, you know, as we're talking about funding, I did bring some comparable funding numbers, yep. um, you know, maybe share. Um, you know, Hampshire Reasonable compares very, um, very much um, academically. I, I didn't bring uh, academics. Hampshire Regional compares very uh, well academically among the top schools in the region. When you think about the top schools performance-wise in the region, you're thinking about the Long Meadows, uh, Minichogs, Amherst Regionals. Um, Hampshire Regional performs on par with every one of those. Um, in terms of type of school and being a regional uh, middle high school, um, on per student cost, uh, Hampshire Regional is the most efficient. Um, if you look at Hampshire Regional versus Frontier Regional versus Amherst Regional, and I will say that Amherst Regional is an outlier, um, versus Mahar, um, and you look at per student costs, what the overall per student costs and expenditures are for Amherst Regional, and then you can look at the municipal K to sixes that fall under those seven to 12 regions, and you can see what the spending is um, per school. Um, There are towns here that are finding ways to fund both their middle high school, their regional middle high school, and their elementary school. I am not, you know, you can draw your own conclusions from this, um, but, you know, there's definitely some funding inequities in terms of what's being spent. And I think one of the things we run into every year, we don't like to have competition between Hampshire Regional and, and Norris, but it, it turns yep. out mm-hmm. sometimes that, you know, right. we have people from Norris saying, right. well, we need money, and right. Hampshire Regional gets what they, they basically right. want. So it, putting right. the schools against each other is right. just not a good thing. Right, you know? I, I'm not, but I'm, I'm well, saying that not, if, yeah. you look at, if you looked at the funding among the regional um, middle high school for Frontier and their member schools, and you'll see a little less disparity. Yeah. But I mean, if you look at Southampton K through six, uh, we're the mm-hmm. lowest there by quite a bit. A long shot. Yeah. 
by a long shot. Yeah. And we, we do an excellent I mean, job with what we have. There's some reality to that situation. Yeah. yeah. Um, Frontier, their member towns are, are funding the regional middle high school to, you know, $400 more per student than we are. Um, and yet, you know, Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley um, are all significantly higher. But what that doesn't well, take into middle effect. High schools are typically a little more expensive. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't take teacher salaries, benefits, and all that into. We don't know the disparities right. between those no, regions. I, I, I will agree. I don't like per student cost. I like right. uh, percent over net school spending. Uh, I'd be happy to bring back a percent yeah. over net school spending if you think that would change things. Well, well, I, just I think that would be a good number to see. <laughs> we do a comparison. It's a little dangerous not knowing all that. I, I think that's come up before, though, percent over net school spending, so I don't necessarily want to dig into that. It, again, it's not to, you know, but funding came up, yep. and this is, this is funding. I don't these think are, any of us will say, yeah, any of us will say we spend too much for Norris School. You know, that's, right. I don't think that's the issue. <laughs> okay. And, and I guess I have a question, mm -hmm. since you have all of this data, what, what's the ratio of, you know, what, what's the class size, average class size? How do we compare with these other, uh, other regions? It could be looked up. Um, I don't have average class sizes. Yeah, I, I mean, there's so much other data that's they're spending behind. more per there's student, more but they have larger needs, classes, yeah. though, than you do. I mean, I'm totally with you on not comparing just per pupil numbers because no, class I, I size matters, like how these, how these schools are due on. I think it's a terrible metric. Um, but I can, uh, you can go to the DESE website and you can sort schools. They have an Excel spreadsheet by I've, percent I've over net school that. spending and you can sort that list and see where you fall. Yep. And, and what's included? And that's a better metric. I like percent over net school spending. Okay. And what staff is included in a, um, data like this? Like curriculum directors? Are they? This is all staff. This is everything. All staff, including administrative staff? Yeah. 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 It's all in there. Yeah. It's all, all in. So there's pretty wide dis differences in. Yeah. They, they do their best to create an apples to apples metric, but you will see, so for example, uh, Springfield's cost per student is very high because they have very needy students. The expectations of what they need to fund per student is higher. So when you see higher needs, you will see higher cost per student. So I will absolutely say um, the state likes to publish this because they like to say that this is an apples to apples comparison. I disagree. Um, I think percent over net school spending is a much better metric. Um, percent over net school spending, your net school spending metric is based on um, your special education percentages, your ELL numbers, your poverty numbers, all those things that drive cost. So when you look at a Springfield, their cost per student is very high, their percent over net school spending is very low. So you get those differences. I, what I look for if I'm looking to sort of evaluate what a school is spending um, or whether they're spending an appropriate amount on their schools, I look at both of them. I say, okay, per pupil cost, and then I look at their percent over net school spending. State average net school spending is 22% over uh, the state minimum. Okay. Now, going back to school choice in and out, that's regulated, mm -hmm. uh, so we can't increase that to, to what our normal costs are per student, correct? There's a formula that no, we have to abide no. by. We, uh, the, the state mandates it's $5,000 per student, and then there is a formula for additional special education costs. So if you see a number, it's not strictly 5,000 per student. We have some number of special education students that we then charge back the sending town for. Uh, I'm, a, yeah, I'm sure you and, do. And the costs vary. There's a whole formula and a whole spreadsheet that's very complicated that we have to do for that. And, and just to put it in perspective, according to a report I get that Krista did mm -hmm. um, at the last meeting, one out of every five students requires some type of special education service. Right. Mm -hmm. So school choice, we don't have to accept it. We can close down school choice. Right. But I'm assuming when you do the budget process, you're factoring in that $5,000 versus what it really costs us, and you're just adding to the classroom that's already there rather than creating classrooms, yes. correct? And is there that, some tipping point where you say no more? Okay. So on an annual basis, um, the principal recommends numbers to the school committee. The school committee then approves those numbers. It's usually, I want to say in April, April, May, somewhere in there. Okay. It, it, it varies by school. There's a deadline. You n notify the state how many seats you have in each class, and then you accept up to that number. Do we have any say on how many students go out? 
No. Okay. But again, it's at a lower cost, so. Right. So yeah. if we're reimbursing you 12000 and they go out for 5000 that's actually a benefit? I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not yeah. that we want them to go out, of course. We want them right. to stay in. Right. And then we get charter kids who are seventeen, eighteen thousand, 18000 and you're being assessed twelve. So, you know, there's a mix. Yeah. Um, you're being assessed 12000 for an out-of-district student that costs us 75000 so, you know, if we were to instead just bill back out of district costs, um, you might be a winner, you might be a loser in that. Yeah, again, I'm sure then, you, through a budget yeah. process, you'll calculate all that and figure yes. out. Okay. Yeah. How many 12th graders do dual enrollment? Right now, I think we have about seven. Oh, that's all? Mm -hmm. okay. Now, Maureen, if I can go over, you had a question on Smith Oak. Um, not really. We had a presentation, I think, uh, last time. I wasn't, I think what I was having a hard time to do is, um, <coughs> I guess in general, I'm just wondering if, I know with Smith Volk, obviously they're seeking a different type of education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I know when I was in the school committee, they were looking into like a robotics program and they were looking at other things that might attract students to stay. Not just um, right. Volk students, but uh, choice out. Charter. Or, I mean, charter out. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if you have looked at the people that are leaving, why they're leaving. Is it because, the, you know, their parents are in another district? Or have you actually looked in why people leave? Um, I, I have not looked here yeah. at that. I, in six months, I haven't really had a chance to think about that. Sure. Yeah, right. um, it's a good question. Mm. Um, students often choice out or choice in. A lot of students choice in to us. Um, I hear a lot of people in my entry plan I've spoken with who've really very proudly who know about this district um, say it's a hidden gem. Mm -hmm. um, again, we have a regional middle high school whose graduates compare very favorably with some of the schools that we would consider the top schools in Western Mass. How, what are those um, comparisons based on, like standardized testing? What are, you, what are the metrics? Test, college testing, okay. college, uh, college enrollment. placement, right. um, you know, enrollments, AP testing. We have a tremendous number of AP testing. I'm sorry, Chris. SAT scores. SAT, SAT scores, scores okay. things Good. like that. Um, you know, we want to start looking at it across sort of all metrics. I've started to analyze some of the MCAS data because that's the sort of the most readily available to me that I can parse through. Um, but, uh, you know, 98% of... Um, our graduates last year um, were proficient or higher on the ELA <coughs> MCAS. Um, that's, you know, that's as close as you get to 100%, and there's no such thing as 100% on that, on that test. So, you know, um, which co compares higher than many of the schools I just mentioned. Um, we compare uh, very equally on math. Math is always a little lower. I believe we're at 88%, which is very high. Um, on proficient or higher and again students also can retake that test so you have students in that number you have students who had a crappy day who didn't eat breakfast that morning whatever your hope is you retest them and they pass um, I think one of the the badges of honor that Kristen shared with me early on is that she's never had a student not graduate because of MCAS so at some point every student is in some way shape or form past the MCAS I think primarily here we I think primarily here we're here to talk about the budget but yeah. I certainly think that I just you know I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that uh, both schools are incredible schools my kids had phenomenal experiences both Norris and Hampshire Regional and I don't want that to get lost in any of this um, so I just right. think it would be a good idea to just uh, look at you know, why people leave. Yep. When I've heard about people leaving, it's because their parents uh, work in the school system in another district and they just give them a ride there. Yep. I know we have people that are actually at Hampshire Regional whose um, parents work at Hampshire Regional, so it works both ways. But also there's a lack of diversity that some people don't like about Hampshire Regional. Yep. Those are the only reasons I've heard of why people wouldn't stay, but it would be good to do an assessment of that. Right. So when I Sure. Mm -hmm. When I first arrived at Hampshire, I did a survey of school choice students out and in. Yeah. And a number of students choiced out because of athletic programs. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. programs such as lacrosse yeah. and field yeah. hockey mm -hmm. are just programs that students get involved with at a young age and they want to participate mm -hmm. in that sport at a high school yeah. level that we don't have. Um, and there were just some like individualized conflicts that people mm -hmm. felt like were problematic for them and they choiced out. And the number when I arrived was about equal of choice in and choice out and now we're about I think 58 or 68 choice right. out I don't recall off the top of my head and we're at right. 130 choice in yeah. so that's pretty significant right. and I think because we have a strong athletic program we have a strong arts program it's the our core right. program is mm -hmm. is very strong but it's 
all of the um, additional richness that Hampshire has to offer. We've um, a lot of AP programs, and we've added programs that attract the kind of Smith Vogue type of students. So, mm -hmm. like a um, computer science program, we recently added, and um, a new program that we're going to start next year is our AP capstone course, which is going to be something that us and Minnetonka are the only schools in Western Mass that offer that um, at no additional cost because our school librarian is going to teach it in addition to running the library at the time. So we're looking at ways to add programs without adding extra costs because we're really committed to ensuring that we're putting forward a level, a level service budget. But it is time to do another analysis because the one I did was eight years ago. Um, Thank so you. So I want to sort of dovetail on the enrichment piece as well. I think Hampshire Regional has done a tremendous job of maintaining enrichment programs. Um, some of the things, and, and enrichment activities for students, you know, one of the things I saw when I was first doing a walkthrough um, that, that really sold me on Hampshire Regional was, um, and I say this over and over, and, and Kristen's going to roll her eyes, but, um, you know, I saw students using power tools in science class, and I thought that's, you know, that's not something that, that most schools trust middle school kids with, like real 18 volt, you know, uh, Milwaukee, I think Milwaukee uh, power tools, uh, cutoff saws, <laughs> Name dropping you know, now. circular <laughs> saws, things like that, you know. Um, you know, they also have, I, I've been at districts where they have storerooms full of pottery wheels that they're just getting rid of. They've dumped the program, they've eliminated the program. Um, schools are littered right now with students who don't feel connected to what's going on. They don't feel that sense of ownership. Math isn't for them. So, you know, they're struggling with, with seeing the importance of math, but they have that pottery class that lets them use their hands and they can, they can, they can touch something and build something and make something. Whether it's a vocational school or it's a pottery class, there's a lot of students who really have the, that need for tactile, um, uh, that tactile development, you know, they, they, they long for that. And schools more and more are cutting that out. I watch, you know, again, recess being cut. It drives me crazy. Um, you know, that's where most kids learn, you know, spinners or no spinners. You know, how you negotiate that in the kickball playground is really important. It's a lost skill that kids have lost because those things aren't in schools, enrichment activities and the opportunities for kids to really learn and take some risks sometimes with a power tool, a circular saw, you know, not <laughs> flinging it around and juggling it, yep. but learning brave, appropriate yeah. loose use and respect yeah. for power tools. Mm -hmm. Um, but Margaret wanted to. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I you have to heard, introduce yourself. Oh, sorry, Margaret Larson, um, Nine David, a member of the Hampshire Regional School Committee. So I think, you know, we, you've heard a lot about the enrichment programs that they have at the regional. Um, it doesn't matter how good those are if the students don't know about them who are coming in. So one of the things that I've noticed over the past few years is the effort that the uh, elementary school principals and the high school principal have been doing to, you know, outreach to sixth grade parents because they don't necessarily know. And we also have the challenge in Williamsburg, for example, where they are geographically closer to Northampton High, and it is just easier for them to go there. And yet we've seen our numbers in Williamsburg increase because of the outreach and the, the PR and, you know, just talking about it and letting people know what's happening. So, you know, there's two parts to that, and I want to make sure that, you know, we're, that they're getting it recognized. Yeah, I don't think anybody would deny that we have no. great, great levels of education in both schools. So, right. and we're doing it sometimes on a very meager budget. <laughs> Can I add to the, yes, sir. Uh, Carl Schlerman, Hampshire Regional. Can I add to the school choice discussion in that there's a dropping demographic in Western Massachusetts. There are fewer and fewer kids in our schools. I think Berkshire County dropped 20% in enrollment, huge numbers. I'm not sure what our percentages are here, but you know, we're down, what, 10 or 15% at least. Mm -hmm. So we have been using school choice kids to keep our, you know, our, our infrastructure whole and not start you know, carving out chunks of school and closing it down because you can't offer, I mean, the education we offer is based on you know, what we have and the people we have doing it. We, we walk a really fine line if you start cutting your budget and suddenly we start losing. I mean, people look to the best school they can find, basically, and that's mm -hmm. the... Right. the I guess one good thing about choice, and so they're coming to our school because it's a really good school, and it's benefiting us. I mean, we're getting almost a million dollars a year 
that you're not paying because we have these kids filling the seats in our school. If we make rash decisions and suddenly start cutting budgets, those kids are going to say, hey, this place isn't good anymore. They're going to go somewhere else. And not only are we going to lose those kids, it's going to be this cascading effect. And so we, we walk a really fine line. And I'm not holding it against anyone, but it's just a reality that we work with every day when we're trying to make decisions. And, and the other thing I want to point out is that there are schools that are just getting hammered, you know, Springfield, Holyoke. And it's a little bit parasitic. I mean, we're surviving at their expense, honestly. Mm -hmm. And this is a huge issue with state funding, and it's, it's way beyond what we can do anything about in the school committee. But I think you as towns have to start talking to state representatives and say, this is not sustainable. I mean, we're, we've hit a wall. You know the state funding has been flat for, what, 15, it's 20 actually years? Gone down. Yeah, it's gone yeah. down. Yeah. And costs keep going up, and yep. it's all property tax, and that's why we're here, because right, everyone's right. screaming. And that's why one of our members of the Hampshire Regional abstained from the budget, because the state is not pulling their weight. Yes. And the scenario you just mentioned around school choice is the reality at Norris School. And that's the other thing that we have to be concerned about, not just at Hampshire Regional, but also the impact of uh, the cutting of services at our local elementary school. Yeah, so and, and, and just to, you know, jump on with you here like I don't think anybody up here is 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 wanting to cut any school budget for the reasons that you've outlined it's it's more about just having an overall discussion with regard to that about fairness and equitability across a That's regional fine. agreement I just want when to we have to balance the, yeah. the, balance the demands of a local school yeah. that we that we you know for lack of a better way to put it have a hundred percent of control over versus a regional school that we don't and I'm not advocating that we do yeah. have a hundred percent of control over that but it's a different <laughs> dynamic and I think that like fairness is is really what we really want to dig into and to try to make them equitable yeah. as much as possible in terms of everything well, I would just encourage you to hammer on the state more yeah yeah we have it, and one of the Sabadosa is coming to our meeting Monday and we're gonna certainly give her the same line mm -hmm. it's like okay welcome to reality here we need help you know that might be a good thing to bring Lindsay here she's absolutely for well yeah. Uh, yeah she I think there, there's I hope to see her tomorrow and that was one of the things I wanted to raise. What can we do? I mean, not just Southampton, but all the member school districts mm -hmm. and representatives to start to get United. Better, yeah. better support from the state. Because if we're looking at $12,000 a student and they're giving us $5,000 for school choice, I mean, there's an, I know it's, it's a buffer. It saves in some respects if it doesn't add to cost. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. It's still substantially less than what it really is, co really is yeah. costing us. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that five thousand dollar number came about around 1999. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's six thousand. We keep hitting the same topic. C of very CPI has items. gone up. Like we're ability, talking so yeah. 15, 20 years of nothing right. being looked at. Right. Right. The value of that money is half of what it used to be. Mm -hmm. Quite honestly, yeah. and very I, true. I think our dilemma during the budget process is mm -hmm. people say, "Well, we got to fund." Norris, we got to fund Hampshire, mm -hmm. we got to fund right. the police, we got to fund the fire. And we have people saying, do we really need a full time fire department? Do we need, mm -hmm. really need a full time police? Do we really, I mean, boy, it's just, we need them all because some people say they come to town because they have a great school. But from my point of view, if you got a great school, you have lousy police, lousy fire, people aren't coming to town. So it's everybody together yep. looking at how the town runs, I think. So we've got to balance that, which is getting tougher and tougher. So we're just asking, as you look through the budget, right. you know, to, to try to keep a fine eye yep. on that. And we want to continue the, the discussions as we go along. Right. And we're, we're, we're not really, we're really not adding things. And I think, you know, a couple of things we're looking at is, is ways to save. I know Kristen is looking at, um, we spend a tremendous amount of money in out-of-district transportation. So we spend a lot of money on tuition, but then we also have to transport those students. Mm -hmm. um, we, on tuition, we do get a little money back um, in Circuit Breaker. Mm -hmm. We don't get any money back on transportation. Mm -hmm. And so we end up paying um, companies like Vanpool, which are great resources, but they're expensive. They're very expensive. Um, Kristen has found that if she can consolidate a few students and provide some support to the elementary schools, I think we're transporting some Norris students um, via Hampshire Regional's van at less than half the cost that um, Vanpool was charging. And you've been um, doing that for a couple of I years. One, yeah. Yeah, first really? year, right. Oh, I think one of the items that Kristen might have on the budget this year is for a new van, maybe, and driver, maybe next year. Well, I haven't talked we to anybody yet. So I right. So, 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 <laughs> so, 
transportation. Uh, but sorry. transportation is a perfect um, example of the no, state it's, not it's coming through. It's realistic that we need to think about these things. You know, we may bring up the potential for getting another van and outlaying, you know, 30000 for a van plus the salary first year, but then saving $50,000 a year every year going forward. Yeah. I guess that would be great as long as that $50,000 savings comes off the budget so that we, we see that and right. spread it along. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So Aaron brings up a good point. So it's, we're in our first year of having our van driver <coughs> take routes, and I know that one student is transported from Southampton to Westfield. Um, next year, we did a projection of what our out of district, just our transportation is, and this is per student. So one student would be $17,860. One student, just transportation for the year, $27,000. 20900 18525 mm -hmm. 20900 right. So it's just, it's about $100,000 yeah. to transport right. these. Five students. And we're only transporting the, the young man to Westfield because he got accepted into Correct. was aeronautics or? Correct. Yeah, and we went through that process, so. Right. Yeah. But if and he was going for something that Smith had, we wouldn't be paying for transportation. Correct. 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 Okay. And I know there are other transportation routes right now between Hampshire and the Norris School that if we had the opportunity to have another van driver, um, Eliza and I were just talking about a student who needs transportation. And because there's not availability with our current van, um, it's a cost that needs to go to Vanpool, which has these like astronomical figures of transportation. So, um, I, and I know that um, in her request, she's hoping for a reading teacher, but that reading teacher would pay for a program that would bring students back in district. So these out of district costs are astronomical. Um, so we're hoping that if we build some internal structures, we can um, defray that cost. And as Matt said, if we start sharing costs, that's where the big savings is gonna come mm -hmm. in. Um, and I think those are the creative ideas that we're looking yes, for. Yes, I mean, it's definitely what Never we're mind, for. we never transport it. You're saying, why don't we get a van and we'll save money? Exactly. I mean, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's another cost saving measure that our uh, director of student activities, John Plord, is piloting this year. So he's, right now, what we're doing is we're paying for athletic transportation to games and home from games because okay. coaches like to talk kids up and then process after the game. However, if we only transport students to games and then for students to get a ride home from their families or we could take one of our vans to the athletic event and transport any student home from with our van and not use our transportation company, that's another $30,000 that we could save. So we're, we're truly are like looking at different opportunities to save money and we're trying to pilot all of these things so we can present to you what it would look like and have a reduction in the budget because I, I do agree that if we're going to have a savings, it should be a yeah. negative number. Right. And I know when my son was playing sports, we'd go to every game. Yeah. You know, if another parent wasn't there, you'd bring Joe <laughs> of or Tom back with you. you know? And oftentimes drive through your town to go to the school right. to pick up yeah. your student. So right. that's silly now. So we're just trying yeah. to figure it out. Good um, idea. And it would be a good idea if everybody in the room wrote uh, because the state did promise regional transportation funding of 100%. Correct. And I think we're at, what, 60% yeah, now? 65, yeah. 65%. Yeah. 65 yeah. So they haven't come through, and it's cost us over the years thousands and thousands right. of dollars. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. no, there, there, are, there are a lot of, you know, and, and coming into, into education and things like that from, you know, I, I came from outside. And I, think, I feel like there, there are a lot of penny-wise pound fuel decisions that get made. Um, based largely on budget. Um, you know, right now we're looking at two out of district students, you know, who, who we don't have a choice in. At some point it becomes a legal matter and we are legally obligated to educate them. And um, for lack of a reading specialist, reading service, yeah, and, and, and for the cost of Norris both of to those, provide them with that service, it pays for that specialist. We're going to spend uh, sixty thousand a student for tuition plus transportation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're we're looking at one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for lack of a teacher. And at some point, I guarantee the school had a, re a reading specialist, and times were good, and you didn't have quite as many students. And instead of trying to double up and keep things, and budgets got tight, and someone said, cut the reading specialist. So they cut the reading specialist, and lo and behold, now we're having reading issues creep up and creep up and creep up. Um, it happens all the time. So you're going to make that decision because I have to cut something out of the budget, and I can't cut a second grade teacher, I can't cut a math teacher. This is a teacher who, this is a specialist teacher. I'm going to cut them because I think I can absorb those kids in the classroom. And for five years, it works. Did, yeah. It works for five years. 
and then you get hit. Those students creep up from kindergarten to first grade to second grade to third grade. They can't read. And you've got an advocate in your office, and you're arguing with your advocate about your inability to provide reading services to them, and they're threatening to go to the Bureau of Special Ed Appeals, where you know you're going to lose, and you're going to look at not this replacement. I mean, yeah, that's... There again, if you have a plan and show us the return on the yeah, investment, that's, that's, you get a teacher, it'll save us from going out, or I think that's a great idea. There's nothing, right, nothing right. wrong and, with that. And so that, you know, that The point teacher, is, you're not going to pull those, you're not going to pull those students back likely, those but students you're going to prevent back. more from going, and it sounds right. like your, your, your yeah. reasoning there is, is right. for every two students gone, you've more right. than... You've right. more than paid. Right. Once a kid's gone, your chance of getting them back is incredibly small. Um, you know, what we're looking at is we've probably got a few kids who might be 75% of the way there. We've got some more kids that are maybe 50%. We might lose some of the kids who are 75%. We might just lose them. But the 50% kids, can we bring them back? Yeah. And it's not going to save us immediately, but it's going to be a one-time investment that's going to plug that hole in the roof and the roof's not going to get worse, yeah. and you know, and or we're going to reshingle the roof even, and yep. you know, keep are it. You, from, are you from able long to time. identify any services that would meet the needs of our? I'm talking about Norris now, mm -hmm. of, of students we have in Norris that would also attract more out of district students to create a program that more or less paid for itself because it would right. be unique. Well, I mean, something like that clearly is a, is a, right. that's a revenue producer that was, in that's my mind. Um, I mean, it's so on the cost there, side there is things, the ability, if you have a, re a good program and it's well developed, um, you can uh, take in students. So we said that, um, you know, those two students are about 60,000 each. Yeah. Um, if we had a teacher in that school and we offered other schools mm -hmm. 24,000, you suppose they might take it? You know, I, and I don't know. We're, we have, you know, amounts sure. that we can charge by law. Sure. We can't. I'm, yeah. I'm just throwing an arbitrary yeah. number out there. But if we gave them a proportional share cost of putting those kids in the classroom, mm -hmm. there might be an opportunity to take some revenue. I, I'm not guaranteeing no, no, it's going to happen. It. Um, the other thing we can do is we can also have, um, you know, interschool agreements throughout Hampshire Regional. I think that's another item we need to look more at and creating, you know, I know everybody wants a central office you can drown in a bathtub, but there are some positions that maybe we need to think about on the regional level because no mm -hmm. one school can support them. Um, you know, a behaviorist, an ELL teacher. Mm -hmm. um, we are struggling mightily, and we've been struggling mightily to find an ELL teacher for two of our schools. Um, you know, there's some things that, you know, having a regional resource for that might help. We're not there yet where we're saying okay let's add a bunch of positions to our central office but we're having those conversations and we're saying what makes sense to think about we've talked about a couple different positions they didn't necessarily sail but we're going to keep we're going to keep at it we're going to keep you know maybe we're beating our head against a post but maybe at some point the post is going to crack you know our heads might be harder than the post i don't know do some so we're going to we're going to keep travel? looking at it Hmm? Sorry, do some positions travel so you can? Yes. Okay. We do have some shared positions. Uh, this year we, uh, we have two schools that have point two, so one day a week need for a school psychologist. Mm -hmm. Those two combined to a point four, and we actually found a really good school psychologist who is a retiree who just wanted a little more time. I do think we have uh, two of our schools needed a uh, combined point seven ELL. I think they finally just found that after like six months of looking. Um, occupational therapists are notorious for being part used, and we've got a few that are shared, things like that. And, and you know, we want to look at how we can do that in a productive way and utilize the resources we have. Mm -hmm. yep, so so there's I, we think there's opportunity there. I can't promise it's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> um, but I think over the next few years, hopefully, you know, we're going to be able to present to the town some, some opportunities that we've addressed. Yeah. Yeah. So getting back to what you said earlier, twice, you've only been here six months? What's that? You've only been here six months? I've been here a whole six months now. Yeah, actually, I just, I just got an email saying that, um, <laughs> from some organization saying, congratulations, you've been six months. Oh, yeah. LinkedIn. Like LinkedIn or so something. So you, you've had a heck of a six months. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've had a heck of a six months. It's been a fun six months, yes. <laughs> I wouldn't want it any other way, quite honestly. I, I, I mean, I, ha I have to say I, I love the region. Um, I, it's grown on me spectacularly. Um, and uh, and, and I, I mean, I have to say the, walk the walkthroughs I did um, initially blew me away in terms of what's going on, what the kids are doing, 
Um, your students are fantastic. Um, I really uh, I enjoy them every day. Come check out my Facebook page. There's a little plug for my Facebook page. Um, I like to post pictures of visits. I like to do bus duty, things like that. And uh, the principals entertain me and humor me when I want to play bus duty. It's great. <laughs> So, Speaking yeah. of that, uh, Aliza or Aaron, do you, hmm? you've, uh, I'm looking at Aliza and Aaron. Do oh, you yeah. folks want to say something? Sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Just Represent to, Norris. Uh, How are oh, you? Yeah. Good. How are you? Hi. Um, I can just follow introduce up with yourself. Sorry. Aliza Pluta, Norris School. I live in Holyoke. Um, just follow up on what Aaron was talking about with a language-based classroom in order to keep those tuitions back at the school rather than tuitioning out. And um, I know that I did submit to you a paper that kind of outlines all of that if you got it by email the other day. Um, we, you know, things pop up, you know, we have a student who's not even at our school yet and would attend preschool. We own the children of Southampton at the beginning at age three. And when someone has um, a disability at the age of three, it has to be tuitioned out because we cannot service that child at our school. We have to, we are responsible. So it starts at age three. Um, over the years, I've, I've, I've tried to put into my budget a way to support all students so that we have a tiered system of support for our students. And so that we look at the whole class and then we assess the students and then based on the assessments we differentiate instruction for students. Well when it's one teacher and 20 kids in a classroom, you can't do it effectively. So we need to provide interventionists. Well I didn't have interventionists. Um, because I could never increase my budget in order to have those intervention teachers, right? So they're, the language-based issues continue to grow. And then by the time kids get it, we're seeing it like in fourth and fifth grade where uh, we've met, we've re-met, we've tried, we've differentiated their programming as best as we can. And then we get to a point where I'm sitting in front of an advocate like Aaron said, and I know deep in my gut that if this were my child, the be I can't say no. How can I say no? Um, because we can only piecemeal their program so much. So now we're taking them out of music class to get reading, and we're taking them out of library to get reading, and we're taking them before school for reading, and we're spending money after school on reading. And then all of a sudden, this child's program looks completely different than everybody else's. So it, do it doesn't make any sense. Um, and so trying to implement a language-based program. And like you said, we may be able to get some money out of that, right? But at the same time, I was talking to one of my special ed teachers last year, and it's almost like if you build it, they will come. We w if we started a language-based program last year, within two months it'd be full. <laughs> so there are kids that are at that 75% already where we know, you know, we're trying to hang on to, hang on to them as long as we can. And we do see Sometimes kids leave to go to White Oak or Curtis Blake or you know other, these other places for fifth and sixth grade, and then they go back to the high school for seventh. And it, what can they do there that we can't do at Norris? You know, and I I get it; it's totally different. But if you see the difference in per pupil expenditures, it, that's part of where it is. You know, I don't have all these extras. You know, I'm, I've been level funded or level service. I get confused. I know what they are, but when I'm standing up here talking, it's a little difficult. You know, I appreciate that everybody voted for the override and it kept me whole, and that's fantastic. Um, but when I go back, we lost two teachers and got, had the specialist teachers went to part time four years ago. Specialist teachers were able to come back to full time because of, I think, uh, certified free cash in the fall. We were able to bring one teacher back. We're still down that one teacher. Yep. So I'm still from, from trying to recoup right. from then. Um, our enrollment has gone down. That is true. And you know, sometimes I say to the teachers, because I have to wear both hats, I have to be the fiscally responsible one. And I also have to pay, uh, you know, play the devil sometimes. And I say to teachers, well, our, our enrollment is down. So I can't really ask for more teachers, because the amount of kids that we left looks like we could have lost two teachers. But we already lost one. But it's doing, it, it's, they need to be different. I don't need another classroom teacher, right? Our class size isn't that high. It's not, it's not enormous, it's, it's good. But I can't do anything special. And when I mean special, I don't mean teach Spanish. I mean differentiate instruction for students who need it. Give them the support that they need. Meet them where they're at. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm asking for the, you know, more money in my budget in order to support those students. Okay. Obviously, as you're working on the budget process, 
We are working on it now. Yep, we've had a couple discussions. Our math program is five years old. The whole district is looking at a new math program. Um, also, we don't, we have, what we do for ELA at Norris School is uh, a reader's writer's workshop. And with $5,000 in my budget for professional development every year, that is not enough money to continually um, professionally develop teachers in order to be really great reading teachers. They do a great job. We don't have a curriculum map, scope and sequence. We don't have a reading program. We do, a, we do a system of reading, so that's what we do. I feel like it's falling short. I think you know we need to look at something else. My teachers are saying it. I agree with them. But looking at a reading program costs a lot of money. Um, so not only do we need a reading program or some other way of doing reading, uh, we also would need someone to oversee that. So when I have a reading specialist person come to do professional development, it's one and done. They come in, I only have enough money to pay them to come for the day. I might file the teachers into the conference room to do some learning for two hours at a time, grade two, and then two hours for grade three, and then the next day, that costs a lot, of, it's over $1,000 a day for these people to come. Um, but then there's no follow-up. I can follow up, I can go into the classroom, but I have all these other things to do as well. I'm not an ELA coach or a math coach, so I also put that in there. And I realize th this is a lot, you know, this is a lot, but this is what would make Norris really great um, and, and put us to, to where we should be rather than just, you know, stringing along every year trying to do what we can do. I mean, one thing that I did last year was a, a regular classroom teacher retired and instead of hiring another regular classroom teacher, I looked at the numbers, and I hired a special ed teacher. So, you know, I do look at those things. I don't just, you know, think, well, one's leaving and one's coming, and I'm not going to tell anybody or whatever. I, I really looked at the numbers to say, well, what do we need? And we had in our special ed programs at each, you know, each special ed teacher was taking about two grade levels at a time, and there were six kids in a, in a reading group. You can't do specialized reading instruction in a, with a reading group with six kids if they're all reading at different reading levels. So we were able to get closer to what they need in that respect. Now on training, uh, where I work, uh, we do a lot of training. We used to send everybody to Boston and get trained in certain aspects. But then we decided we're just going to do, uh, <laughs> do a, a WebEx. Oh, okay. And yep. we, so we can have 10 people sitting in my location, 10 Lowell, 10 Boston, 10 Dartmouth, yep. and it costs us next to nothing. Is there a way to train teachers like that, get other schools Yep, uh, we've on done board? some online training as well. Um, and I don't, th and it doesn't cost as much. So with some of the um, programs that we've purchased over the years, it does come with a certain amount of time for training. Right. So you might get a two hour training that's embedded in the cost that you already purchased the materials with. But it's, it's more of, you know, ongoing. You can't, a teacher can't just watch something for two hours and right. then become an expert in the classroom. Agreed. The follow-up has to be there. The check-in has to be there. The, your, their questions need to be answered, and it, it all costs money and time. Right. And when teachers are out of the classroom, I have to pay subs to be in the classroom. So that's another cost right. that I have to you know, look at the subline to find sure. out how, how am I going to do this during the school day or during our half-day professional development. Yeah. I mean, I hope everybody is, I just want to point out a, a summary of this, and, and thank you, and thank you for that, but like what's come, what is entering my head right now is that we have, we have a tale of, of two different schools that were, that our children are responsible for. We have two schools that are unbelievably efficient, that are doing an unbelievable job educating our students. Um, I don't think either school, I mean, it's clear that your school is, is uh, very underfunded and under-resourced. And Hampshire Regional, I think, is right-sized. And so, um, meaning in right size, meaning it's running very efficiently. It's doing an excellent job. Um, it has just enough, just what it needs, and is doing great. But then we have another school that we're also responsible for. And it's clear that you have a tremendous amount of needs. And so I just, I, this, is, this is the reason for all of this, right? I mean, this is why we're here. And it's not to, it's not to try to even out money, it's to try to make sure that we're sending the right message to our townspeople that, um, you know, we have a problem um, and we're at a breaking point. I mean, if you just look at the history of our town over the last few years, um, 
we're trying to pass override after override every other year and it's just unsustainable right and so like and, and Aaron to your point like I know that this isn't going to happen overnight but what we're trying to do up here I think and I don't want to speak for all of us but I'll speak for myself is that we're just trying to send the sense of urgency that we are doing everything we can as a town to preserve the services that we have and I'm getting super passionate about this but this is education police fire ambulance highway like we are at a breaking point. I'm not, I'm not trying to be doomsday, but like you can just see it in the history of this. Um, and we need, we need to do a better job across all aspects. And we're asking this of every, every town department, not, not just yours, but um, we have to think creatively. Um, I understand and I think you, know, you brought up a good example of how you know, a, a resource teacher would, would, prevent, would prevent students from leaving, which in turn would have an ROI associated with it. And I think we need to look at more of those things, especially some uh, some cost-cutting things as well, to be able to um, make these schools more ec more equitable. Really, like that they're rights they're both right sized, right? Um, and so and I'm not I'm not a magician, and I and, and I don't know how yeah. to do that. But but at this point, we we need to make sure that we're sending the sense of urgency on this because at the end of the day, I think none of us want to start eliminating and cutting that's not the answer it, no, it really no we're going to be in the position of being able to support an override i mean we had like 20 years of not having an override and it, it's just it was not on the happen. part of a tremendous amount of people that had actually got passed last yeah. time around and thank goodness for that saving six I teachers know. at the local yeah. level and stuff we're not going to be able to be in that boat next right. year right. and then it just comes as hard things and then you're then you're chasing your tail and then you're doing the wrong thing to aaron's point which is that the answer is not to cuts, you, you just end up, then it's penny wise, pound foolish, right. and we're we're in a deeper problem than than we otherwise need to be. So we've got to we have to think about this together. Yeah. So. I mean, you know, when you look at Norris, and it's a fantastic school, and I and I don't, you know, I don't want to sound negative in you're any not, way. You you're know? not. We have amazing teachers that do amazing things, and people are so happy, right? We they do these creative, awesome projects. Mm -hmm. They collaborate with outside authors and, and storytellers and they present to parents and parents love it and it's it's great and it really is great so people are satisfied with how much money they're spending for what they're getting right i i totally get that but when you dive deeper into what's happening when your child is having trouble reading in first grade so they go to someone to help them read and then your child is still having trouble reading in second grade and they go to someone to help them read then we don't have enough resources yep. for them to get what they need and then they become a special ed student mm -hmm. you know and and that's that's a really elementary explanation of no what's it, but it's not because then and that our ends spend up costing rate us should not be 20 percent 20 percent of our kids should not be in special ed yeah, I, I was services. shocked at that number yeah one in five because there's nowhere else to go so you know that's basically Anyway. I, well, I quickly, Aaron Kutcher, <laughs> I just quickly wanted to talk about what we've been absorbing internally capital-wise. So I also want, just want to put out there that some of the big stuff that's been happening to the school infrastructure, have, we have had to, this year, um, have, have had to work with and have had to come into our own budget and figure out how to find the money in this really, really tiny, tiny budget that doesn't have any room for wiggle. So, I mean, we spent a lot of money. We have a lot of items that still need to be looked at. And so we're, we're, we try everything we can. We do every patch we can do. We do every, you know, we have a phenomenal head custodian. Yeah. And, um, you know, we do everything we can do. But we're just, it's, it's an old structure. I mean, my husband went to school there. It's an old structure. So it's, we, you know, we have to really, we work with everything we have. We have great resources at our school. But we're just at this point, kind of like what you're saying, where hard. things are just crumbling everywhere, internally underneath, and then the in infrastructure itself. And so I just want to be clear about some of that. I think, yeah, Francine, uh, yeah you, you, you put forward, I'm, I'm not sure who prepared yeah. this, but I think it's worth mentioning the capital, what you're referring to, the capital committee yeah. of yeah. infrastructure needs of Norris School. I think it's important for people to hear that so, oh, so um, what we refer to capital committee is the fire alarm system needs to be replaced needs to be replaced it's antiquated if it goes it won't work and our school will be shut down that was from the inspection report in august that's about twenty thousand four hundred ninety eight the sinks in the grade five six wing which were shut down because of the water inspection last year um, need to be replaced and in order to do that you have to add Here's hot where I water. might need Tom. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to add hot water. And we're not, originally we thought we had to add hot water. But there's a way <laughs> to do it, which is like, come on up, Tom. <laughs> I'll let you guys talk <laughs> Where the cost that. would only be $9,000. <laughs> uh, Tom Labelli, head custodian. How you doing? Hi, Tom. Jim. Um, 
the 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 sinks <clears throat> themselves aren't being replaced it's literally just the fixtures it's the fixtures for the uh, the hot and cold water and by when I say hot and cold water since the school was built night or the addition was put on none of the sinks have been connected to hot water by code according to the building inspector we have to have the hot water connected the original estimate I think was at like twenty four thousand dollars to bring hot water from the source to the sinks but then after talking to some of the uh, the plumbers in town, a quicker and less expensive fix is to put actual hot water, uh, tankless hot water heaters, electric hot water heaters underneath the sinks, That's bringing the idea. price down to about, it was about $7,500 plus about another $1,600 for an electrical hookup to hook up those sinks. And then all the sinks would have uh, running hot and cold water. And then there's a flushing program that the state has to eliminate the lead and uh, high lead and high copper content in the um, system. And simply what that means is every morning the teachers would come in, they would run their water for about two minutes. <clears throat> they would record the time that they do it. And then it, you can go to a website where they would record this. And then after a period, I believe it's like two months, the state comes in, they, checks the hot they check the water for lead and copper content. And if they see decreased numbers going down over a period of, I believe, six months, and don't hold me to the exact numbers, but it's a, it's a period that they would test it. And if it goes down and stays down, then we would be back to our regular, uh, I think, twice a year water testing for lead and copper content. So it's, it's something that should be done according to the building inspector, according to uh, the plumbing inspector, in order for us to pass code, but they've been kind enough to sign off on the uh, occupancy for the school. But the, the, up there. the fire alarm system is, is yeah, more of an issue. The fire think. alarm mm -hmm. system is a safety issue and, and simply said, um, John Workman said, if, if you can't have parts for that available, readily available, the school will be shut down. Yeah. Yeah. And I contact, is it uh, Grinnell? Yeah. Uh, Tycho Grinnell came and they did the inspection. They originally told me that, oh, this thing is, you know, we have a lot of these in this, in this school system. Uh, there's parts that are available. And then I said, would you be willing to, or I was asked to ask him, would you be willing to put that in writing that parts are available for this system so in case it fails? He goes, well, no, we can't do that. We don't service it. Um, Lee Audio is the one that services it, and I went to Lee Audio, and they do not have readily available parts for that alarm system if it were to fail. Okay. okay. So they recommended getting an upgrade to a new system. So you brought well, that works. before the Capitol yeah. Committee? That yeah. has been, yes, referred okay. to Capitol Committee. Yeah, I, I know going into the new and fiscal now, year, we have yeah. roughly $300,000 in free cash certified, correct, Ed? 304, yeah. something like that? 305,000, but that's not to be used for expenses, but you know, capital issues, yeah. we can talk about that. Then the uh, carpeting on the second floor, which is original to the um, addition, is buckling like it was in the library, especially when it's... You're talking hallways or classrooms? Or classrooms. Or? In all the classrooms yeah. upstairs on the second floor, it buckles literally between two and three inches. Mm -hmm. And when it gets hot and humidity, uh, it gets hot and humid, it shrinks. Yep. Or actually, I think it... Expands. It expands. expands. Yeah. And then, when and then it's in cold, the winter, it when it gets all that you turn the heat on, it yeah. dries out again. Did we get a cost on that, replacing that? Or? Uh, we have several quotes. Um, from 25 to 47,000, and okay. so we just went right in the middle at 36. Yeah. 36. So, will we put carpet back or just do tiles so we'd be done with they it? They would put type, um, not tiles, but carpet tiles. carpet tiles. Similar to the library. Right? Similar to the library, you spill, you can pick one up. Yeah. So, you can just yeah, replace, replace individual second, ones yeah. if you have to. The okay. expense comes not in just, it sounds like a lot for carpet, but they have to tear it all up, they have to scrape all the glue off, they have to put down new cove molding and everything, so it just it adds up. Wait, it's 11 when, rooms. When was Norris rooms. built? Do you remember? Uh, 95. 95. 95. Okay, yeah, 95. so there shouldn't be any asbestos under the tile or under the no, carpet not for in glue. The, the glue and stuff, I don't right. believe so. Oh, good. Okay. And then if you've, if you've visited Norris in the last few years, you would notice that the concrete outside mm -hmm. is terrible. Mm -hmm. And we did spend some money a few years ago to have it patched. Well, it looks worse now than it did before because that's what happens when you patch the concrete and the water gets in there and then it freezes and then it expands. So that was also referred to Capital Committee. And we uh, one question here. Uh, sure. Back, all the way back to last year, last meeting, um, Aaron had some pictures of some door jams right. that were pretty much rusted right through. They're not on this list. She said she was going to go to Capital on that? Yeah, oh. we, we. That's all. We, go ahead. There's okay. been no, no Capital meeting, so no. I've been waiting to hear about a Capital meeting. There's been nothing no. that I've and been. I, 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 I'm working on that. I, I did reach out uh, to the chair and uh, haven't heard back yet, but we're 
I'm on that committee, so. Yeah. Yeah, we'll wait. We we'll definitely. Yeah. So you're gonna yeah. Those yeah. That will be added. Yeah, because those are pretty awful yeah. pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Did you folks prioritize all this stuff? Because I know these, these are the priorities, including the doors. Um, I think that the doors we didn't put here because they were going to the green. Trying, we were trying, trying to get money from the green energy money. Some um, of those. So are... now it should go on here, but it is on my regular capital plan prioritized yeah. as well. Yeah, we got to make sure all of them get on for the next year. Yeah, and I think that we picked the worst ones. Um, with a price because they're I, they all they're need beyond, to be replaced. They're kind of beyond but repair. But there are some that are beyond repair. Yeah, so, yeah. the doors are going to be expensive. And I'd also yeah. like to take the opportunity to compliment them because while I sent out a request to do a five-year capital plan, uh, Aaron sent me back the other day a six-year capital plan, for <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's done very well. So yeah. she's an overachiever. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's great. So, do we have any? Um, so yeah, just on the, the, the timing of the capital request when that came in. Thanks, Tom. There's an opportunity. Um, there was sort of a belief that, um, uh, that, that that some of the doors could be patched and we were waiting to see and there was an understanding that there was potentially some green grant money that might come in to be able to do that. So we sort of put it off and that is actually, I've kind of popped it out to the next couple of years. So. You know, if you'd like it on this year's, I can throw in a new form for it. But um, if it's not too late, but yeah, I don't you know, think you can repair thought, any of those. Hmm? I don't think you can repair any of those doors. Those are all. Um, I thought no, some of the doors. Are, understand. I mean, yeah. the doors look yeah, like they were so all. That's where there are some John that are. A repair that are bad. Yeah, but the they're so expensive. One, the preschool one was terrible looking. The preschool coming in from the front of the preschool. It's not only the doors. What the sketchy part. The sketchy part is the jams, the right. steel encasements that are coming up. Yep. Some of them are yeah, right there. Those are the pictures from that. Some are completely yeah. rotted out, about 12 inches up, <clears throat> and it's um, that would. If push came to shove, you could have a welder come in and you could you could fabricate it, to, to, yeah. to, to, because of, there's windows that go out beyond that, and now you're talking even a more major expense. <clears throat> the expenses we've got are for replacing the doors, and looking at possibly having somebody come in and fabricate some of those jams that are holding the doors in as opposed to replacing those. Because if you start to replace those, it's going to be really, really expensive. Yeah. But, I mean, at some point, they may not be able to be repaired. Now, you just got an estimate on that, if we, correct? I actually Rough. got an estimate from the, the original people that installed the doors okay. for the school in 95. So if we did a, still bit, around. a bit, hopefully, we'd get some good prices. But Yes, everything yeah. that was done on that capital plan was with the understanding that if the school approves it, we're going to go back and we're going to get competitive bidding on right. all of these. These were just to give, I, t I was very clear, I need ballpark costs going forward to do all of these things with the assumption that we would get more detailed okay. if there's a go ahead. Did they include prevailing wage? Yes. These so are all we're set on wages. that? Yep. Good. Okay, great. Thank you. So do we have any other questions up here for the folks, any of the folks that came to the podium or if we want to drag somebody else up, I'm sure they'd be willing I, to come. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Hampshire Region just the question of, I guess, the principal and the superintendent. We had a presentation from Smith Vocational here a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I was shocked that tw only 20% of the students at Smith are Northampton residents and 80% come from all of the outlying districts. Now my question is, as we're going through, you know, every number and having discussions about programs and services, the fact that we, I think collectively in, in surrounding area make up 80% of the population of that school, do we have any voice? And if we don't, would that be something we should be Talking not not Southampton alone. Right. I'm talking about it like an advisory council to Smith, yeah. comprised of sending school district representatives, so that maybe we could do some have some influence there. The way we're talking here about cost savings and 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 programming and and things that are in the interest of each of these individual school districts who are sending students there. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Last year, Dr. Jurgensen and I were part of a. Um, analysis task force group that had vocational schools as well as public schools and I don't think that a lot of public schools or towns are aware of that disparity we were the only public school that participated it was all vocational schools and they they like their autonomy so I think that is definitely something that we should start 
talking to towns about because they set their own tuition rate. But th um, I mean, that becomes it. I mean, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. It puts us at an extreme disadvantage because it's the only game in town, Sorry. essentially. That's the only place people can go. And we have no way of influencing some of their thinking or their decision making. Mm -hmm. Not only just about programming, but about costs. Right. So if there was more competition with Westfield, it would yeah. probably drive costs down. That's true. So mm -hmm. I was going to say, because uh, we choose the uh, the Volk School that we're going to send folks to, does Westfield have the same depth of programs that Smith does? We, I, from my understanding, we choose to transport students to Smith Volk. So right. students can choose to go to Westfield, and they have comparable programs. Smith has a agricultural program that. Westfield doesn't have, but Westfield also has some other programs that. Smith I guess, I guess have. what I'm saying, because you say we we don't have any leverage, but could we have leverage if we said we're going to decide to go to Westfield instead of Smith, and you know use that as negotiating with Smith? I, I don't want to dis you know put any student at a disadvantage oh, that no, they shouldn't no. go to the one that best meets their needs, but I'm just saying having some. Yeah conversations with right. them, some interaction with them. But it is interesting that students can choice to any public high school, but students can't choice to public vocational school. So it, it's definitely something to well, discuss. I thought they could. I thought the only difference was the transportation. Exactly. Right. The transportation the wouldn't be right. provided. So if it. kids choice out to, I don't know, East Hampton, do we have to transport them? No. no. Okay, so it's the same rule. No, it's not. No? Right? We don't have to no. transport to Volk or to choice out. Correct. But we transfer we to, Volk. to Smith Volk. Smith Volk. Right. right. No, That's but I mean, in we have general. an agreement. The district has an agreement with Smith Volk to transport there. Right. right. But they can go to any Volk school they want. We're just not transporting them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. But it's definitely something worth discussion. Yeah. Now, Mike Kaling was here. He's the chair, of, I guess, the board of Smith. Uh, so I think he was more than willing to have conversations with us. So we should set something up. Yeah. And I need to know from you folks if you think it's valuable and, and doable. It's not to add more work to people. It's really to achieve a better outcome. For uh, we've never had a conversation, so it can't hurt. No, I, I think it would be in the best interest of towns because mm -hmm. the, high, the Hampshire Regional doesn't pay the vocational school. I know. School. It's, it's the town. The town. Yeah. So right. I really feel right. like... So I, I think we should set it up and we, <clears throat> we can ask the other towns. No, since they're the high school age students, that right. was why. And I, I think that's why other, ta other schools didn't participate in this task force because they don't really have like a mm -hmm. vested interest, but, they, but we all should because it certainly impacts the budget overall. That's what I was going to ask. Do the other towns send anybody to Smith or is it just us? I'm sorry, the other the, towns, towns in our district? Yeah. Yes, yes absolutely. quite a bit. Okay, quite so everybody bit. should be involved then. That's, yeah. Okay. So anybody up here have any questions for those folks before we entertain the public? Uh, Jim, I think you wanted to talk. Yeah, Jim Palermo, Glendale Road. Uh, this is, as a citizen of Southampton, not as a school committee member, um, the state is imposing an incredible amount of of um, unreimbursed unre un uh, mandates on the school. Um, and, you know, I, I'm amazed at what our schools do, and I'm so proud to be part of the system. But the problem is the state is not giving us the money we need. Uh, transportation is only one small thing. I read one article that said there's up to 500 unfunded mandates, many of them affiliated with, uh, with standardized testing and everything that's involved there. The idea that, for example, a few years back, Norris had to go out and buy computers so the state could give MCAS on computers. Well, that's an unfunded mandate. Um, and, I, and I think that with the current crop of uh, new people that we have in, in Boston as our elected representatives, I think there's many welcoming ears that we can appeal to. And uh, I think that as a town, we should maybe even reach out to other communities and really put pressure on our elected officials. Um, my ab abstinence in the, in the uh, last budget election was the frustration that uh, the schools are being asked to do more and more and more and more without, and, and the state just keeps dumping on us and something's gotta be done. You know, so as a taxpayer, as a member of this community, uh, realizing the strain that we have trying to get overrides 
and that there is a limit to how much property tax people are willing to pay, that we have to look at more progressive ways of getting money. Mm -hmm. So I urge us to become very aggressive in contacting our state officials. Yeah, I think what we're saying for the schools, they've got to be creative, but we've got to be more creative and getting more funding. We have to be assertive. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, how the state can say they balance the budget yeah. And at the same time, way underfund education. With a massive surplus, by the way. But Pardon? With a massive surplus, by the way. But, yeah, with yeah. a massive surplus. Where's the, the, I forgot the section of the law, but by law, they're supposed to fund every mandate they impose on the school system as long as funds are available. Yeah. Well, if they have a huge reserve fund, they've got funds available. Well, that's the rainy day fund. They can't. Oh, use I it. see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, sorry. Jim. So, Jim. To, to your point. So, we we hear this loud and clear at this meeting. That the the I think one of the my concerns is that these types of meetings aren't happening at every single town. And so, I just want to task the school committee members that are here for both. You know, obviously, we've got it covered on this board for from a Southampton perspective with our with our um, you know legislature and Senate personnel for the state. But like if. If you're a member, and I don't know, I'm not sure of everybody who's here, but if you, but when you go back to your school committees that include, you know, Hampshire Regional with all the other members for the other neighboring towns, they should be going back to their individual select boards, and we should yeah. be, you know, for lack of a better way to put it, ganging up and putting pressure on. And the more people that do this, and the more majorities, and the more towns, the more voices that get heard, and the squeaky right. wheel gets the grease. Hey, so Carol like we can say all we want, but like. Th this should yeah. come up in committee as well. well. Carol and I just recently attended a conference at the Mass uh, Association of School Committees. And the superintendent from Springfield, for example, said that charter schools are costing Springfield $55 million a year. Um, and yet we have elected officials who want to expand charter schools and want to really privatize uh, public education my opinion as a, as a private citizen and everybody just sits there and go oh. it's taxation I mean, without representation yep. it is you know but um, you know i'm old i can be a curmudgeon <laughs> thank you we met in uh, williamsburg the principal myself um and there's their finance committee and their select board and they were also talking about charter schools and how charter school teachers don't need to be certified they don't need to accept special education students they don't need to pay as much for transportation so one thing that they thought to do that wouldn't cost the town money would be to advocate with their state representative who's senator hines is to require charter schools to have the same expectations that public schools do because it just seems fair. So one of their things, one of their slogans is to equal or level the playing field. So I think that if that's something that everyone can um, adopt, that would be really powerful because they, of course they don't have as much cost and they can set their tuition at a higher rate. So um, it's just something that I think would be effective. Thanks. Is there anybody else from the public that wants to ask any questions or put any comments in? No? Are you... Is there any other, is, so nobody has any other topics on, on this particular, or questions on this particular topic. Is there any other topic that anybody wants to come up from the public to speak about? We'll have open public time. Everybody's tired and wants to go home. John, can I just ask a question about the capital? Um, after the Norris people mentioned about the capital. Yep. What's the timetable? I know Matt, you're the representative yep. to uh, the capital committee, but I mean, we have a town meeting coming up. We're not addressing capital unless it was like an emergency. Basically, that's more of an annual town meeting event. What's the timetable between now and the annual town meeting for addressing any capital request? That would take us to, I would say, probably the beginning of April. Okay. Yeah. And, and actually, I, you know, I will say this is that at least for Nora School, they've got a number of projects that uh, you know that really does need to get taken care of perhaps we take a look at bundling a lot of that together and actually do a borrowing on it mm -hmm. yeah we, we have a lot so uh, yeah. we're not gonna have enough money to cover it out of <clears> our <throat> right our reserve so I think this was a, a great beginning conversation and it, it's just a beginning conversation it's up to us to continue it so uh, we're gonna send out some emails Bobby to you on some other questions and we'll keep in contact but I look forward to getting a lot of emails and hopefully some meetings from us. And if you have any questions, feel free to, to bring them in. So 
Thank you very much. We Thank you very it. much for coming. Thank you. Hey, Jim. How are you? I haven't seen you. I'm well. I'm well. How are good. you? Good. Good. How are the kids? Kids are doing good. Good. Yeah. Nice to see you. You too. Very nice. During the meeting. Let's see if there's anything else we have. So. Sorry, we're gonna, we're still continuing. Oh, sorry, that's okay. Okay. Is that, get to use that. Have okay. we heard about the Glendale grant? No. No, right? we, we haven't heard. I just checked in as of this morning. They haven't heard yet, but they said, uh, what's his name? Matt said soon. Mark said soon. Yeah, but the latest thing is so you know. Two weeks ago, it was supposed to be just before Christmas. Right, so. right, right. And, you know, it's on the agenda. Of course, you won't be here. I'm starting to get a little worried about the closing date. And uh, also, I think the agreement's got a February 1st date uh, in there if we want to notify uh, the property owners that we'd like to take a note from them on the property. So. Yeah. I thought it was end of February, no? Is it actually? Well, the closing's the end of February. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I got something else. So we don't I'm, I'm hoping that no, yeah. no later than another 10 days. Okay. Yeah, if we don't hear from something quick, I'm going to get a little nervous. Ed, what about, or Ed, what about um, the uh, East Street Bridge and having um, them get us 100% design three or, four, three or four? It's on executive session for That's Tuesday. Yeah. 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 We okay. just got the email about that today. Actually, if you all open your emails, you'll see. Yeah, I just saw that. For Tuesday night. Yeah, we got there's that today. There's a hint. It's okay. fine. But, you know. Is there, then I, my I next thing. I opened mine between probably 4.30 this afternoon and when I got it and, and now either. But it's there. And then just to offer you the platform, you did send a bunch of emails. Is there anything that you want that can't wait till next meeting or that we should talk about now? No, I think, I think we're good till the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, that's next Tuesday. So I know. Have, it's. Yeah. Four okay. days away. <laughs> so if there's nothing nothing else, we need a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. A second. second. Anybody want to discuss it? No. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you, everyone. I thought that went very well. <laughs>